In this video, we'll be taking a look at three NFL games happening on September 15, 2024, and providing you with free team picks and total picks for each one of those games, so six picks in total. Welcome back to Cash Out Sports, let's dive right into it. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe and to click the bell icon to get notified as soon as these videos get released, so that you have more time to plan out your bets as we provide these videos on a daily basis. I can guarantee that you'll have all the important information that you'll need on these three NFL games after fully watching this video. One more thing before we start, if you would like to gain access to our best exclusive sports picks to take your journey to the next level, then check out our Patreon in the link down below where we offer our best single picks, parlay picks, and much more. Now let's get started. Seattle Seahawks vs. New England Patriots The Seattle Seahawks are heading to Foxborough, Massachusetts, to face the New England Patriots in a highly anticipated non-conference matchup on Sunday afternoon at Gillette Stadium. This marks week two of the new NFL season, and both teams are eager to maintain their winning momentum. The Patriots are coming off an upset victory over the Cincinnati Bengals on the road in week one, while the Seahawks are looking to build on their solid performance at home, where they secured a victory against the Denver Broncos. The the last time these two teams met was during the 2020 season, with the Seahawks coming out on top in a thrilling 35-30 win in Seattle. Last season, the Patriots struggled against the spread, particularly in front of their home fans. They managed to win just two of their nine home games and closed the season with a dismal 1-4 record down the stretch. In contrast, the Seahawks were effective when playing away from Seattle, losing only once in their final four road games. The Seahawks hold a significant advantage offensively in this contest, having ranked in the middle of the league in points scored per game last season. Meanwhile, the Patriots' offense struggled mightily, finishing dead last in the league with a meager 13.9 points per game. New England failed to score more than 17 points in their final five games at Gillette Stadium, and their offensive woes continued in Week 1, as they managed just 16 points. With a relatively inexperienced Patriots' offense still trying to find its rhythm under a new quarterback and head coach, the Seahawks' defense should be well-positioned to limit their scoring opportunities. In their previous two meetings, Seattle has both won outright and covered the spread, including a 35-30 victory the last time these teams met. While there may be some appeal in backing the Patriots as home underdogs, much of their Week 1 win seemed to hinge on the Bengals' mistakes, as Cincinnati often starts slow early in the season. New England enters this game brimming with confidence after taking down the Bengals in their season opener. However, the key question remains, can the Patriots' defense hold its own against a well-rounded Seattle offense? The Seahawks looked sharp in their Week 1 win over Denver, and defensively, they should be more than capable of handling a Patriots offense that, frankly, doesn't inspire much much concern. On the offensive side of the ball, Geno Smith and the Seahawks should generate enough points to pull away in this matchup. Given the experience and cohesion of Seattle's offense, combined with the Patriots' lingering issues, I anticipate that the Seahawks will return to form here, showing the Patriots' team we've been expecting to see. The Seattle Seahawks to win and cover the spread as favorites is our full game side pick. Looking at the trends, the Seahawks either pushed or went under the point total in four of their final five games in the 2023 season. They also pushed or went under in their last three away games. Seattle's defense was solid on the road, holding opponents to 20 points or fewer in their last two games away from home. On the other side, the Patriots went under the point total in four of their last five home games at Gillette Stadium and failed to exceed 17 points in five consecutive contests on their home turf. During the 2023 campaign, the Patriots were shut out twice at home and went under the total in their Week 1 matchup this year. With one of the weakest offenses in the NFL last season, the Patriots don't project to improve much this year, finishing near the bottom of the league in key offensive categories, including total offense and points per game, where they averaged just 13.9. Seattle's offense wasn't stellar either, as they ranked in the bottom half of the league in several offensive metrics, meaning it's unlikely that either team will score quickly or in bunches. New New England's defense, however, was a strong point last season, ranking in the top 10 in yards allowed per game and holding opponents to an average of 21 and a half points. They limited their week one opponent to just 10 points, which gives them a fighting chance in this game. New England's ground game struggled in week one, with Stevenson's longest run topping out at just 17 yards. On the flip side, the Seahawks' defense held Denver to only 3.4 yards per play and intercepted Knicks twice, although they could have easily grabbed two more picks. If New England's 
offensive line fails to get a push up front, Brissett will have a difficult time moving the ball against a Seattle secondary led by Woolen and rookie standout Devin Witherspoon, who are quickly forming one of the league's top cornerback tandems. The Seahawks' offense will face a challenge of their own against a Patriots defense that suffocated the Bengals in Week 1, forcing punts on their first three possessions and winning the turnover battle 3-0. Additionally, the Patriots managed a critical fourth down stop, which resulted in a turnover on downs, as New England rallied to the ball with purpose throughout the game. Given the Patriots' formidable defensive front, it's hard to imagine the Seahawks having much success running the ball. While I like Charbonnet as a runner, if Walker is limited by injury or unavailable, Seattle's offense risks becoming too one-dimensional to consistently move the ball against the stout Patriots' defense. Under the projected total is our full-game total pick. Cleveland Browns vs. Jacksonville Jaguars As we head into the weekend, there's plenty of NFL action to get excited about, particularly in Week 2, where we'll be focusing on a matchup between two teams eager to find their footing after disappointing Week 1 losses. The Cleveland Browns will take on the Jacksonville Jaguars, with both squads looking to bounce back and gain some momentum. After early season stumbles, this game holds significant implications for their respective trajectories. At this point, it's becoming increasingly clear to any football fan or better paying attention that the Deshaun Watson experiment in Cleveland is falling flat. Some might have given Watson the benefit of the doubt in 2022, attributing his poor play to rust after missing over a year due to injury, but his performance last season, even when fully healthy, left much to be desired. In a desperate attempt to rejuvenate their offense, the Browns brought in former Buffalo Bills offensive coordinator Ken Dorsey during the offseason. However, instead of seeing any signs of improvement, Watson's play in Week 1 was arguably the worst it's ever been since he put on a Browns uniform. He failed to complete a single pass longer than 15 yards down the field, threw two costly interceptions, and posted a dismal 51.1 QBR in a humiliating loss to the Dallas Cowboys. Adding to the struggles, Watson faced relentless pressure, a situation that could worsen if Cleveland enters this game without two key offensive linemen. With Jacksonville's defensive front, led by Josh Hines Allen, poised to capitalize on the Browns' struggles, Cleveland's offense could be in for a long day. While there isn't much to celebrate about Cleveland at the moment, Jacksonville should be coming into this game with a bit more confidence, having likely earned a win last week had it not been for a critical fumble by Travis Etienne. The Jaguars were on the verge of taking a commanding 24-7 lead late in the third quarter against Miami, but the turnover shifted the game's momentum, and they eventually let the victory slip away. Had that fumble not occurred, Jacksonville might have pulled off the upset and the narrative surrounding Doug Pedersen's team would be significantly different heading into this matchup. A healthy and confident Trevor Lawrence makes a world of difference for the Jaguars' offense, which showed promise at wide receiver receiver during the first three quarters last week. Historically, teams that blow double-digit leads in Week 1 tend to bounce back well in Week 2, and Jacksonville will look to follow that trend. Neither team delivered the Week 1 performance they hoped for, but Jacksonville enters this game with far more to build upon. The Jaguars played solid football for most of their game against Miami but faltered late, unable to maintain consistency in the final stretch. If they can replicate their early game form for a full 60 minutes, they should be in a strong position. On the other hand, Cleveland's Week 1 performance was disastrous for from start to finish. They were blown out at home, a venue where they went 8-1 last season, raising serious concerns. Injuries are piling up for Cleveland on both sides of the ball, and they're now hitting the road after an offense that could barely move the chains in their own stadium. Cleveland's offensive struggles were glaring last week, with turnovers and poor execution stalling their drives. Jacksonville's defense, which held its own against a potent Miami offense, should be able to exploit Cleveland's deficiencies. The Browns' passing game is nowhere near the level of Miami's, and with Jacksonville proving they can be effective against the run, it's hard to see how Cleveland can generate much offense. The Jaguars, by contrast, were efficient on the ground in Week 1, which doesn't bode well for a Cleveland defense that struggled in that area last week. If Jacksonville can establish their ground game again, their offense should remain steady. Every year, there seems to be optimism around the Cleveland Browns, but more often than not, that optimism is misplaced. Cleveland has a poor track record as underdogs, going 5-8-1 to to against the spread in their last 14 games in that role, and 3-5-1 to to against the spread when underdogs by three or more points. Deshaun Watson looks more like a backup than a franchise quarterback at this point, and unless their offense starts clicking, Cleveland will continue to struggle. Meanwhile, the Jaguars played well enough to win in Miami last week and likely would have if it weren't for that costly Etienne fumble near the goal line. Jacksonville collapsed after that, but they'll be looking to rebound. 
Playing at home, the Jaguars should feel motivated to correct their mistakes from week one and get back on track. They are 4-2 against the spread in their last six games when favored by three or more points, and with the support of their passionate home crowd and Cleveland's troubles on the road, the Jacksonville Jaguars to win and cover the spread as favorites is our full-game side pick. Given what we saw in Week 1, it's hard to trust either of these offenses to score over 20 points. Cleveland's ball security issues, combined with a shaky passing game led by Watson, who seems to be running out of time as the Browns starter, make them a tough team to back. The offensive line is banged up, and without Nick Chubb, Jerome Ford doesn't pose the same threat in the running game. Jacksonville's defense, which held up well against Miami's run game, should be able to stifle Cleveland's ground attack and pressure Watson into mistakes. On the flip side, Cleveland's defense should also have success against Jacksonville's passing game. Their pass rush will be a factor, and their secondary is capable of keeping the Jaguars' receivers in check. Cleveland is also strong enough against the run to prevent Jacksonville from relying solely on their ground game to move the ball. Deshaun Watson's Week 1 performance was dreadful, averaging fewer than 4 yards per pass attempt despite attempting 45 throws against Dallas. With his top target from Week 1, David Njoku, already ruled out for this weekend, the Browns' offensive outlook is bleak. The running game showed some flashes but wasn't overly impressive, and Jacksonville's defense has proven capable of shutting down the run. Trevor Lawrence, while not terrible in Week 1, didn't show signs of being on the verge of an offensive breakout either, especially against a Miami defense that held him in check. These two teams combined for just 34 points in their respective Week 1 games, and until either of them proves otherwise, it's reasonable to expect another low-scoring affair. Therefore, under the projected total is our full game total pick. San Francisco 49ers vs. Minnesota Vikings The San Francisco 49ers will take on the Minnesota Vikings in an exciting National Football Conference matchup this Sunday afternoon. Last season, the 49ers finished with a strong 12-5 record and opened this year's campaign with a solid victory at home against the New York Jets. On the other side, the Vikings wrapped up last year with a 9-8 mark and came out swinging in Week 1, securing an impressive road win over the New York Giants. Notably, Minnesota edged out San Francisco in their their last meeting with a 22-17 home victory. While the 49ers are a formidable team, the Vikings proved to be a standout squad in Week 1, led by Sam Darnold, a former 49er quarterback. Minnesota steamrolled past the Giants with a commanding 28-6 win on the road. The Vikings' defensive unit played a crucial role in that victory, limiting the Giants to just 240 total yards. Minnesota's defense, particularly their rush defense, looks well prepared to contain San Francisco's star running back, Christian McCaffrey assuming he takes the field. The 49ers, who are also coming off a short week, had one of the best rush defenses in the league last year, ranking sixth. They demonstrated their defensive prowess once again in Week 1, holding the Giants to a mere 74 rushing yards, with an average of 3.5 yards per carry. The Vikings' recent success against San Francisco, including last season's 22-17 win, suggests that this matchup will be a hard-fought contest. Returning to the venue that once spelled trouble during his early career with the Jets, Sam Darnold seemed to be on a personal mission for redemption in his Vikings debut. Darnold connected with wide receivers Justin Jefferson and Jalen Naylor for touchdown passes, and he tied a franchise record by completing 12 consecutive passes to open the game, a feat achieved by none other than Vikings legend Fran Tarkenton. San Francisco has struggled historically when playing in Minnesota, losing their last seven road games against the Vikings. Darnold benefited from a favorable game environment, thanks to the Vikings' stout defense. Even though Minnesota will face a much tougher defensive unit in the 49ers, they are expected to keep the game close enough. So the Minnesota Vikings to cover the spread as underdogs are full game side pick. San Francisco's defense is undeniably elite, while Minnesota's offense lacks standout stars and is also missing their talented tight end, TJ Hawkinson. Despite Darnold's decent performance last week, his recent career as a backup over the last two seasons raises doubts about his long-term potential as a starter. In last season's matchup between these teams, the Vikings' defense held the 49ers to 17 points and 325 total yards, with 49ers quarterback Brock Purdy throwing two interceptions. Additionally, the Vikings' are likely to lean heavily on their running game, just as they did last week, which could lead to longer drives and fewer scoring opportunities. Notably, the under has hit in six of Minnesota's last eight games played in September.
September, San Francisco's run game came alive in Week 1 against a Jets defense that appeared ill-prepared to stop them. However, Minnesota's defense, which performed well last season even in the face of inconsistent quarterback play, has the tools to shut down the 49ers' ground attack. When these teams met last season, the 49ers were 7-point favorites but lost 22-17. In that game, Brock Purdy managed just one touchdown while throwing two interceptions, and Christian McCaffrey had one of his least effective performances of the season, averaging only 3 yards per carry on 15 attempts. With McCaffrey's status uncertain for this week's game, it's doubtful that either he or backup Elijah Mason will have much success running the ball against Minnesota's tough defensive front. Under the projected total is our full game total pick. That's all for now, so if you have any other games you would like reviewed, then leave a comment down below with the game you would like analyzed, subscribe to our channel, leave a like on this video, and we'll get to it as soon as we possibly can. We would also love to hear your opinion on the picks presented to you in this video, whether you agree or disagree with them, so leave a comment down below and do let us know.